some breaking news. I'm out of isolation. I mean, I'm still in isolation. I'm indoors. I normally record this podcast out and about, but out of the, the serious isolation bit. Hello and welcome to Zestology. It's the podcast all about energy, vitality and motivation. Last week, I think I sounded a bit grim. I mean, there is a lot to be depressed about at the moment, but um, as you know, we were self-isolating and there were uh, coronavirus symptoms right across the family as well. So we were in and I wasn't feeling particularly great. I'm feeling a lot better now myself, but um, I have to say <laughs> the the out of breathness is absolutely crazy. And a lot of people listening to this who've experienced symptoms will know that I've just run up the stairs to record this podcast in isolation rather than outside and I'm out of breath I never get out of bed out of breath going up the stairs so oh, it does take a while to get over that's for certain and um, either I'm very unfit or probably coronavirus has visited this household how are you getting on um, I really hope you're doing doing well staying healthy staying safe and, and likewise with all your family it is absolutely dreadful, isn't it? But I'm I'm trying to remain chipper. I know last week I did sound quite glum. And normally, listening to Zestology, you're probably used to me being fairly upbeat, aren't you? I mean, there are, of course, lighter moments in this whole isolation thing that most of us are going through listening to this podcast at the moment. I mean, certainly spending time and more time with the family and cooking better food than ever before is absolutely fantastic. Self-isolating from the fridge is proving completely impossible. Um, and today's uh, podcast will reveal what's in my fridge and what's in my freezer. And other more important things as well. Lockdown tactics, that's what we're talking today. Um, how to deal with coronavirus from a physical, mental and emotional perspective. And my guest is Beth O'Hara, who's been on Zestology before. Um, she's a functional naturopath and a functional genetic analyst. Specialises in working with clients with histamine intolerance and mast cell activation syndrome. And you probably know all about my interest in histamine issues. Um, but we don't just talk histamine. In fact, we don't talk about histamine that much. We talk in general terms about immunity, breathing techniques, supplements and tips. And then we go deep. We go into the kind of histamine and the allergies and the mast cell activation syndrome as well. Um, goodness, I, do you know what? I really am out of breath. I, I, I just walked up the stairs. I might have jogged up the stairs, a light jog, but I am I'm out of breath. It's crazy, really. Um, so I hope you enjoy this. I hope you enjoy a bit of lockdown tactics on Zestology. Um, being well informed is clearly important. And I, I, I have to say that some of these podcasts in future won't focus on coronavirus and COVID-19. You know, I mean, obviously this is a podcast about health, but I want it to focus on other stuff as well. And I want there to be a bit of escapism too. And often we have a really good laugh on this podcast, as well as looking at all the kind of outlandish and cutting edge way to um, improve your health. And I want to get back to that a little bit. I do think escapism is important at the moment. Um, giving our poor overworked adrenals a chance to rest. On that theme, before we start today's podcast, I highly recommend Tiger King on Netflix. I will be mentioning that in today's podcast, but if you haven't seen Tiger King yet, and um, I saw Chris Ryan, former podcast guest on Zestology, he said on, Zest on uh, Twitter in the last couple of days, guys, you've got to watch The Lion King, it's fantastic. Chris, it's not the Lion King, it's the Tiger King or Tiger King. It's an utterly brilliant seven part documentary, completely compelling and wonderful escapism. You won't think about anything else for an hour, and that is more needed than ever at the moment in these strange times, isn't it? And talking of escapism, I've been running a poll on the Zestology Book Club page on Facebook as to what is the first book that we should read for the Zestology Book Club. I'm very excited about this. I'll reveal the result very soon. At the moment, I'm just asking, should it be fiction or non-fiction? And fiction is winning. So by the time you listen to this, we might have our first book. But the idea is we all read a book together and then we kind of talk about it. I've never been a member of a book club before and I always thought it sounded quite fun. So um, keeping each other accountable, actually making sure we do read the book um, and a bit of escapism as well. What would you rather read, fiction or non-fiction? You can head to Zestology uh, Book Club on Facebook. If you just search for Zestology Book Club, you'll find it. And it's a closed group. So um, you have to apply to get in. Here's a, here's a little secret. 
you will be allowed in but it's just closed rather than open because that seemed like a nice idea so um, escaping being well informed definitely important but escaping a little bit as well a little bit more on Tiger King coming up on Netflix and for now a bit of lockdown tactics with Beth O'Hara We're recording now. Um, Beth, lovely to talk to you again. It's been a little while. How are you? I'm doing okay, Tony. I'm, I'm really excited to be here with you. It's been an intense, you know, last four to six weeks here. Yeah, it's really intense here as well. I know, it's been that well. week. I know. Yeah. I mean, it's funny, isn't it? Because um, I think people are so worried and the news is so grim. But there are moments of lightheartedness amongst the gloom because sometimes you just have to laugh. I mean, the amount of funny memes I've been sent by friends and the things that we've been laughing about amongst our family. We, there's a certain kind of blitz spirit that, that emerges, but it is, um, it is difficult, isn't it? It can be. I, I do love the meme. I'm, I'm a very uh, much an introvert. And I love the meme. It's like me before quarantine and then me during quarantine. And it's the same picture. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. That's great. I yeah. really resonate with that one. But... Yeah. So you've got the memes. And then um, I tell you what, I'm really, I'm finding it hard to avoid the fridge, Beth. My goodness. I mean, it's just yeah. like being stuck in the house all day. Every time I walk past the fridge, I'm thinking, just a little snack. <laughs> Oh, I bet. You know, I do intermittent fasting. Yes. And so I don't eat until lunch and then I'll eat again at dinner. Yeah. But so I haven't been snacking other than I do go off. I think it's good for women to take a break. And so I take a break on the weekend and do a little more grazing. But well, gosh, I've been so busy. I mean, I haven't I, I had think, time to snack. Well, I think the intermittent fasting is really helpful for snacking because I, in the morning, it's fine. It's easy not to snack. The moment the dam has burst at lunchtime, then all <laughs> afternoon it's snack central until dinner. But uh, <laughs> but I have to say, actually, with a histamine intolerance hat on, um, I feel like I'm feeling really good in terms of the food I've been eating. Because, you know, often I think with histamine intolerance or mast cell, it tends to be when you're eating out, you don't know what the ingredients are or you, you're out and it's oh, the, the only option is a chicken sandwich. I'll have that even though I might have been sitting there for three days. Here I've been preparing mm. myself lovely lunches every day and that's been going really well. So I'm, I'm eating better than ever before. And I've, been made, I've been baking loads of low histamine stuff and I made uh, butternut squash gnocchi couple of days ago which was all low histamine it was lovely very easy to make as well so yeah that sounds amazing yeah. well i've been getting um messages so i get lots of messages from people around the world emails and facebook messages and facebook comments and some people in the uk have been saying with histamine intolerance and mast cell issues they're having trouble sourcing the normal foods and trying to figure out what to do because a lot of people with these kinds of conditions will go to the grocery more frequently so their produce is really fresh. And one of the things I've been um, recommending for people is to really think outside of the box. And if fresh produce isn't available, or the kind of fresh produce, and I work with a lot of people that are on limited foods and have a lot of food sensitivities, um, we can use frozen foods. So those are going to be close to fresh, but canned foods are going to be much higher histamine. So people need to keep that in mind. And then what you can do, too, is when things are available, make up extra in batches and then freeze the leftovers. Oh, and I that's love, what I yeah. do. So all frozen meals. Yeah, my family think I'm mad. I made a batch of I think it was about 28 turkey burgers the other day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's great. Just warm up one for lunch. Perfect. 27 left. You know, um, yeah. It, yeah, yeah, it's and it's and it's so fresh, isn't it? And I have to say there's something about there's a lot of things that you cook when you unfreeze them or defrost them it's probably the correct terminology they're, they're, it's better especially soup it's much better the next day oh soup's always better yeah, yeah. with those flavors can meld and with the people that have more time at home right now a great thing to do if you like ground meats <clears throat> excuse me is to get a meat grinder and you can get a home meat grinder and they're not that expensive and then grind the meat yourself and that's going to be the lowest histamine since ground meat has more surface area, it builds in histamine quickly, 
But if you grind it yourself at home and then make those turkey burgers, you can really keep those histamine levels down. Really? I did not know that. That's so interesting. I mean, the thing is, you are quite hardcore, Beth. I've just got an image of myself, <laughs> of, of you standing at your meat grinder, uh, sticking a turkey <laughs> through there. <laughs> But, you know, 10 years ago, Tony, I was bedridden and debilitated and had to use a cane just to hobble to the bathroom. I was horribly, horribly ill. So much more severe than a lot of people have ever been. But most of the people that I see in my practice are at that level of health where they're just really, really struggling. And so we've got to get tighter around some of these things because their histamine buckets are not just overflowing, but gushing. And so we got to yeah. drop that down quickly. Yeah. I mean, generally speaking, I know obviously I've been reading your blog over the last few days and I know that um, there's a great deal of anxiety around at the moment. And we've tried to deal with this on the podcast and really mm-hmm. thrown out the podcast schedule over the last couple of weeks. And instead, you know, brought in experts like yourself who can talk around the physical the mental and the emotional issues surrounding what's going on. But there is a lot of anxiety based around catching it. I mean, to, you know, for want of a better word, you know, um, what happens if you get it? And I tend to think that we've all had it now and it's not been particularly pleasant, but it's not been that bad. And I really hope we have had it <laughs> because it's the, the something mm-hmm. about the anxiety of waiting to know whether you've got it or not, which is very worrying. Now, you were just talking about yeah. how, you know, 10 years ago you were bedridden and obviously that's led you to doing the work that you're doing. And I know from your blog that you and, and many of the people that consult with you are really worried about getting coronavirus simply because your immune systems for whatever reason might not be as strong as other people's yeah so there's a few facets to this one is that people with mast cell activation syndrome and 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 this is so common so mass activation syndrome is probably it's estimated between 9 and 17% of the general population and way over 50% of the people with chronic health issues have mast cell activation. And what happens is that is that we end up in a Th2 dominant state. So what that means is there are t- two branches of the immune system that are often talked about, Th1 immunity and Th2. And Th1 is the kind of surveillance, recognize pathogens, and launch a response against viruses and bacteria and so on. And then the Th2 system will create longer-term inflammation, and that's what gets overactivated in mass activation and autoimmunity. And then it sets up this inflammatory response that can go on. Now, this is important because the Th1 and Th2 systems work like a seesaw with each other. They they have a feedback mechanism with each other. So when that Th2 inflammatory system gets elevated, it'll dampen the Th1 system and we have a harder time fighting off pathogens. Right. So those of us with mast cell activation, especially your autoimmunity and these kinds of conditions, what I'm telling people is, one, we don't want to panic because... Panic is more stress. Stress weakens the immune system and increases that TH2 inflammation. So we've got to stay really centered and calm. We have to remember that we've had lots of outbreaks before. We had H1N1 that didn't get as much press as this is getting. Um, But we had H1N1 in 2009. There have been other different types of outbreaks. We have flu every year. Now, I'm not saying this is the same as those. This is different. But we got through those. Most people with mass cell activation have had flu. It wasn't fun. It was usually awful. But we get through it. And so we've got to stay centered and remember that we're going to get through this. And then the other part is when we're panicked, it hijacks the part of our brain that makes decisions. And we can't make good rational decisions. And then people start panic buying more toilet paper than they can use in six months or buying, you know, foods that we don't eat or like Twinkies and alcohol were all sold out. And (laughs) I thought that was really interesting. But we want to be able to think really clearly about what are the most important things to do. And the most important things for people is getting extra sleep, managing stress and doing lots of stress reduction, whatever works for people. I love Thich Nhat Hanh saying that the best meditation is the one that you do. 
And so whatever that is for people. I I find the meditation doesn't work quite as well when you're super stressed, but that's a sign that you need it all the more, really, isn't it? There's another saying, a Buddhist saying that says, um, meditate 20 minutes every day, unless you don't have time, then meditate for an hour. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But, but sometimes when we're panicked, that's a great point, Tony. When we're really stressed, sometimes it, our normal methods aren't going to work. And we need to do something different. We need a different tool. So I've been teaching people some different breathing. Um, if you want, I can share it with you here. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so one of the good ones I really love is called box breathing, or it's called tactical breathing, because this is used by police officers and EMTs and military personnel in times of crisis and it's super simple you just inhale for a count of four pause for a count of four exhale for a count of four and pause for a count of four so i'll just talk everybody through it here so we'll just all do it together so everybody can take a normal breath and then exhale and at the end of the exhale you're going to start to inhale two three four, pause, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, pause, two, three, four, and then normal breath, and then another round, so inhale, two, three, four, pause, two, three, four, Exhale, two, three, four, and pause, two, three, four. Now, if you've been having trouble breathing, that might be a little hard to do right now. Yeah. And so you might have to do it for a count of two or a count of three. So you can adjust it however you want, but it slows down the heart rate. And then the other one that I've been teaching people on the that was, Facebook live. That was very live, nice, by the way. Already for Thank you. <laughs> Good. And I've been doing these on Facebook Lives with people on Mondays. I'm running Facebook Lives. And um, the other one that I'm teaching people is the same technique. So we inhale, pause, and then we breathe out like you puff your cheeks out and breathe out like you're blowing up a balloon. like, <laughs> And then relax the belly and let the breath rush in. So we could try that. And that's a good way to increase lung capacity and strengthen the lungs. Yeah. So maybe we'll try that for a couple of rounds. So we just, well, I'll do a little shorter because I can see that you're still having a little trouble breathing too. No, I'm okay. So we'll, can you see? Oh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not too bad. I, I, I think it's a, a week ago it was, it was a bit weird, but I feel okay now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So we'll inhale, two, three, four. Pause, two, three, four. Blow it out. Use your belly. Blow it all out and then relax your belly. Let the air rush in. And then just normal exhale. Lovely. <laughs> so you can, yeah, you can do multiple rounds of those. And that's a really good way for people to calm themselves down. And then eating really well, drinking enough water. Those four things sleep, stress, Eating well, water. These are the biggest things. I mean, it's something that I've, are... I've mentioned before just on those topics is, you know, um, you get these kind of highly skilled, highly specialized experts like you on my podcast. And I say um, it must almost annoy your clients when they come in expecting to hear the latest incredible supplement or gadget <laughs> that's going to change their health forever. And you say, hey, just do a little bit of breathing. Just breathe out <laughs> a bit more sleep and you'll be fine. Well, I'm saying this is what we need to focus on first. So if people don't have those down, there's no point in going and spending $200 on special supplements. Get that down. Now, I have done over 60 hours of research into this, and I do have some very targeted supplements, recommendations for people with mast cell activation and autoimmunity that can make a big difference. And they've made a huge difference in my own health and how frequently I get sick and how well I weather infections so used to if i got a cold it would last for at least three weeks and if i got the flu i was really sick for two months and are these supplements relevant to people 
yeah, no problem. Are these supplements relevant for people who don't necessarily suffer from histamine intolerance or, or aren't quite sure or mast cell? Because I think that there's quite a few supplements, it seems to me, that just in general immunity terms are really, really effective. Yes. And so that's a great question. One, the majority of people have too much inflammation. So that's pretty rare unless somebody's a biohacker. <clears throat> Sorry, everything's in bloom. <laughs> just went no in problem. bloom. So I'm just yeah, well, that's, about. Oh, right. That's, that's his. T- <laughs> where, where are you based again? <laughs> I'm in Cincinnati, Ohio. Okay, so yeah, we're we're like two weeks away from all that. Yeah, it's beautiful, but I'm getting a little more drainage than usual. Um, so, yes, so there are some great supports that can work for anyone, and I've I've gone through these in the blog, but just kind of generally, if people are having trouble sleeping, melatonin is a great supplement for this time. Do you want to use a pharmaceutical grade brand like some of those on the blog? Or I just wouldn't get a cheap brand. Melatonin's inexpensive anyway. But because it's a hormone, you want to make sure that it's been, it's a pharmaceutical grade. So it has the exact same amount of milligrams capsule to capsule. And that way you don't get one milligram in one capsule, five in one other capsule. And you can't right. figure out why some days you're okay and some days you're super groggy. Yeah, I mean, so, well, I've just and, got some of this um, melatonin by on it here. Um, uh-huh. that knocks, do you know what? It knocks me out so much. I can't take it. And the recommended dose is six sprays. Well, let me I mean, tell no. you, Beth, if I have one spray, I'm, I'm sleeping for about three days. <laughs> wow. So that's pretty potent. So there may be like I have on the blog, a 0.5 milligram melatonin. That's a good place for people to start. Okay. Yeah. And then there's extended release and immediate release formulas so if people are having trouble staying asleep the extended release is a good option i've got that out there on the block and then so again melatonin is great and has also has antioxidant immune support properties isn't there a link between uh, sorry to interrupt isn't there a link between melatonin a a scientific suggestion that melatonin helps with fighting off coronavirus i have read that in more than one place well we have to be a little careful here because um in the u.s the fda is cracking down really hard on anybody who says that a supplement is going to treat cure or prevent yeah because there haven't been clinical trials absolutely yeah yeah Yeah. absolutely yeah there are a lot of trials on other coronaviruses yes. and things like SARS and MERS, and that's where the research is coming from, and then looking at how the immune system links. So this is why th- that research is why I do think it's a really good supplement at this time okay. yeah. for people to do. And then um, vitamin D3, yeah. really critical for balancing the immune system, and fish oil. But not any fish oil. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so fish oil and, normal, and histamine is obviously potentially quite exactly. suspect. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So any fish oil is going to be really high histamine, and most people with histamine intolerance to mass activation are going to react to it. But there is one product that I've got listed in the blog under the COVID-19 posts called SPM Active. And um, this is... SPMs stand for special pro-resolving mediators, meaning it's pro-resolving for inflammation. And it's the step our bodies take those omega-3s and then convert them to the SPMs. So you're getting it really targeted. Um, These SPMs balance that TH2 overactivation. We were talking about the overactivation of the inflammation. So it's really critical in this balancing of having an infection a response to infection to be able to clear it and not getting too much inflammation going and so i really love that product it works well for most people and i've got that linked and described on the blog as well yeah Just interrupting this podcast to remind you that it is brought to you by bioptimizers my partners and a company that have made it their mission to heal your gut and uh, that's what I've been doing for the last month or so, really enjoying their mass zymes, which I'm having with every meal at the moment. Their probiotics, really important as well. Last night, I had a virtual steak night with my mates, which was lovely. And we at eight o'clock on the dot, we were all ready. We all had a steak and a number of sides, and we sat down 
um, and we judged each other on the quality of how each other's plates looked. And I have to say, I didn't get one vote from my mates, which I'm quite quite annoyed about, actually. I had steak and a bit of celeriac mash and some low histamine ketchup as well from the um, Histamine Intolerance Cookbook by Ketoko Guides. Um, and I didn't get one vote, so very disappointed about that. Um, but um, what I was quite pleased about is I had some mass zymes which, uh, during the meal, which I think really kind of helped me digest the steak. Um, and if you go to bioptimizers.com slash Zestology, you'll see that video that, sh that shows how these mass zymes and the probiotics, P3OM, actually uh, digest and dissolve the steak and help you digest in your gut as well. So I um, highly recommend a virtual steak night and I highly recommend Bioptimizers. If you go to bioptimizers.com slash Zestology, use the code Zestology10, you'll get 10% off. Um, and if you go to, um, if you're in the UK, you can go to bioptimizers.co.uk and use that code Zestology10 as well. And yeah, I mean, next time you have a steak night, not only will you, will you be having a nice time with your mates, virtually, online, on lockdown, but you'll also be able to take your mass zymes halfway through and digest it better as well. It's bioptimizers.com slash Zestology for a happy gut and a happy life. And now back to the show. Yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, it's so interesting how our scientific endeavors across the world seem to be entirely focused scientific and functional medicine and everything else towards this new virus in a way that the whole world has rarely worked together ever i mean i wonder what we will find out in one month and three months time from now about how to fight this how to treat it and eventually um how to prevent people from from getting it because that's another one of the things isn't it the great uncertainty about when everything will go back to normal inverted commas we just don't really know Right. I think that's what's most concerning. And I think that's what's got panic and fear stirred up because there's a lot of unknowns right now. And we have outbreaks all the time of different kinds of things, but it's, it's more known. What, what are the actual complication rates? What are the complications? What are the risk factors and how do we address it and how do we prevent it and so on? And there is a lot that's going on. I'm in a, a number of think tanks. And one of the things I love is how much practitioners are coming together and openly sharing information, just everything to help practitioners, everything to get this information out to people and what they can do to be supporting themselves and taking care of themselves. Because unless you have the inclination and the educational background to sift through hundreds of research articles, it's hard for people to put this information together for themselves. And so we have in these think tanks people that are specializing in certain areas and digging into the research and then bringing it to the group. And then we can all benefit and get all the information out. So that's a lot of stuff happening behind the scenes. Yeah. And that makes me very happy because we can reach so many people quickly that way. Um, you haven't mentioned there's a couple of other things that um, I wanted to ask you about. You haven't mentioned vitamin C, liposomal vitamin C. I mean, obviously, the link between vitamin C and histamine intolerance and mast cell is, is quite well known in a beneficial sense. Is that something that you think is important as well for people's general immunity? I mean, I know I bought some for my mum. Uh huh. Yeah. So vitamin C is important for immune balance and it's really important for producing diamine oxidase. So diamine oxidase needs vitamin C and there are a number of roles of vitamin C. Now we don't know for sure if this is a preventative, but there have been some cases where vitamin C IVs were used and things like that, that seem to be beneficial. There's more information that needs to be uncovered there. The trick with vitamin C for people with histamine intolerance and mast cell issues is that most of it's ascorbic acid, which comes from corn fermentation. So we want to make sure that we're getting a tapioca based or that we're getting, um, I really like camu camu, which is a berry and it's a low histamine, low oxalate, whole food form of vitamin C. And that's got the entire complex. So that's good. And then there's a very certain sodium ascorbate I use for people in my practice that I've got on the blog. And that sodium ascorbate is great for people that have lower blood pressure. 
So that's what I'm using. So vitamin C uses this, these sodium transporters to get into the cells. So that's why I like to use that form. And it's a hypoallergenic one. I know we spoke about it before, but you've got to bring out your own supplement, you know, because people would, uh, <laughs> then, then it would save all the worry. I'm actually working on that. So I've got two formulas that I'm working on, custom formulas, and then I have some other formulas that um, are going to come out this year. Oh, amazing. And some of the process, it's just a long process to get those out. Yeah. But I'm going to have those this year. And then I'm also doing, um, because I can only work with so many people one-to-one, um, I'm starting some master classes that are low cost and people can join and learn this stuff in depth and kind of how I step people through and it'll basically get them through about the first five, six stages that I do with all of my clients and really help get them on the road to healing. So I want to have that out here um, in a few weeks and hopefully that'll help more people as well. Yeah. That's that's a great idea. Well, um, let me know when you bring all of those out. I'll definitely post it, post on my histamine intolerance blog as well. Oh, um, thank you, Tom. Yeah, oh, de- definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, just in general terms, I, stay safe and well in these crazy times. I mean, one of the things that I would say is really helping more than anything is an element of normality and an element of escape. I'm enjoying fiction more than ever before. And I don't know if you've seen Tiger King on Netflix, but that is wonderful <laughs> escapism. For the first time last night. <laughs> Isn't it brilliant? Oh my gosh, I forgot everything going on in the world. Yeah, exactly. I mean, honestly, <laughs> no, if you I'm want to forget everything, watch Tiger King. It's so good. Right, right. No, I ran out of Outlander episodes so i had to I had to come up with something else <laughs> it's very good isn't it yes yeah it was it was i i don't know very good is exactly how i would describe it's very entertaining extraordinary <laughs> yeah yeah we've been rationing ourselves to one a night because it's so good we don't want to run out but um <laughs> well no, normally i'd um I would ask you for one tip and one book that you'd recommend, but in the spirit of kind of one bit of escapism is that you mentioned Out- Outlander. What's that? Oh my gosh, Tony, this is an amazing show about a woman from the um, late 1940s who finds a way to, through these stones that are kind of like Stonehenge stones. They're these very spiritual um, I don't know, stones, very special place. Yeah. And um, she doesn't know that she's going to go through time, but she goes and she touches one of the stones and it sends her back to the 1700s. Wow. And, wow. and she's a healer. So I find it, I really like her character um, from that aspect also. And when she goes back in time, then she meets this man, Jamie, and then they, you know, she gets stuck in time and then they have this relation. It's just oh, amazing, okay. beautiful, um, intense. I don't know. It's it's one of the best shows I've ever seen. Okay. You should well, check I, it out. I, I will, definitely. I mean, we really do need to get away from the grim news as well as be well informed enough to know what's going on. So that's um, that's excellent. Yes, we have to have balance. We yeah. definitely have to have balance. Yeah. And, um if I can, I just want to invite people that they can go to masscell360.com and go to check out the blog. And there are lots of things on histamine intolerance and mast cell activation. But there's a COVID-19 section that's got the things we've been talking about detailed in there. And um, some people are having trouble finding supplements and sourcing supplements. So we've opened up our um, European private dispensaries for people with mast cell and histamine issues to be able to access those. They're normally not gen- uh, generally available to the public. And there's some ways that if people need help, um, they can get help through there. And then um, if people go to Facebook and mast cell 360 Facebook page, I've got some um, Facebook lives on there I've been doing. I'm doing those on Mondays and getting lots of free information and breathing and things like that out to people that way too. Yeah, well, I, I've been reading your blogs, and uh, thank you for that. And that, that's that's amazing that you're helping people get the supplements as well. Um, and uh, you're not that much of an introvert, I don't think. A, def- a bit of an introvert, but not too much. <laughs> on a scale of um, the on the Myers Briggs, I'm in the the 
last quartile for introversion. Have you ever but, heard of the phrase ambivert? <laughs> I have. Yeah. Yep. Um, but I do really enjoy one-on-one connections a yeah, lot. Yeah. Uh, Beth, great to talk to you. Thanks. Thanks for that. Really appreciate it. Um, oh, one more thing. Um, when you buy a steak and it says dry aged steak, does that mean that it's just mm-hmm. been gathering histamine for, for weeks at a time? It does. It means it's been aged for at least two weeks. Oh um, some, some steaks are aged for a, a, a month, but there are some farms now that are doing low histamine beef. One of them that I really love is called White Oak Pastures, and I just got their beef in today, actually, like an hour ago, so I'm going to try it. So they only chill it for 24 hours. Um, Now, that's based in the States, but I would also check. There's got to be other places in the U.K. and in um, the E.U. that are doing this no aging. So there's a minimal chilling of 24 hours that has to happen for beef. And then they freeze it right away. So that might be a beef option for people. That's 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 brilliant. So, um, yeah, I did suspect that when I saw dry aged or aged. Um, yeah. Beth, great to talk to you. Thanks so much. And we'll stay safe and healthy. And we'll speak again soon. So good to talk to you, Tony. And same to you. I'm sending my best to you and your family. Thank you. That's it for today's Zestology and Lockdown Tactics. And as I say, not all of these will be coronavirus focused. Um, But uh, I I think it is nice to focus on our health at the moment and the kind of global situation because we're all thinking about it so much. If you've been kind of worrying about how to boost your immunity, you might want to check out last week's podcast with Dr. Matt Cook. Fantastic bloke, functional medicine uh, expert and he runs a clinic called BioReset Medical, one of the world's top experts in the area of natural health and immunity. And we talked about functional medicine treatments and commonly available supplements as well. So that's last week's podcast. And uh, yeah, coming up soon, I've got some I've got some brilliant interviews lined up. Andrew Hill, Chris Shade, so many kind of top draw rock stars in this world who've been queuing up, waiting patiently to get on Zestology because of the kind of coronavirus specials that we've had. But they're coming soon, no doubt. In the meantime, if you fancy a little bit of escapism and you fancy joining in a kind of a mass read, I'm not quite sure how it's going to work. It might be a Zoom hangout or we might um, just read a book together and then record a podcast and you could send me your thoughts on, on the book and I could kind of edit it in. But some kind of Zestology book club where we actually read a book together, I'm very keen to put together and you can head to tonywriting.com and uh, get on the mailing list and uh, then we'll we'll let you know when that starts. But that'll be, it'll be soon. It might even have started already. So you can head to tonywriting.com for the latest. I'll obviously put it up as a blog as well. Listen, have a great week. Stay safe. Please stay uh, isolated and um, these are very very challenging times so I hope you manage to switch off a little bit as well and also please do check out Bioptimizers in terms of boosting your immunity getting the gut right is definitely part of it it's it's probably 70-80% of the package for me and this company has made it their mission to heal our guts so it's, it's interesting isn't it that um, I've partnered with a company Uh, that uh, heals with the gut when that's exactly what I want to do and I know how important it is so I'm enjoying doing that myself bioptimizers.com slash zestology use zestology 10 for 10% off have a great week stay safe and healthy and I'll speak to you soon